गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज सिविल जगदीश कुमार एंड असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इग्नान यूनिवर्सिटी सो अंडर दिस लेक्चर सीरीज वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट गार्मेंट डाइंग प्रिंटिंग एंड एम्ब्रॉयडरी दिस इज अ मैंडेटरी कोर्स इन बीटेक टेक्सटाइल एंड बीटेक टेक्सटाइल टेक्नोलॉजी थर्ड ईयर ओके सो सो फार वी डिस्कस अबाउट द यूनिट टू वन दिस इज अबाउट द गार्मेंट डाइंग टेक्निक्स एंड यूनिट टू दट इज अबाउट द गार्मेंट प्रिंटिंग In unit three, we are discussing about various types of garment finishes. So, under the GDP garment dyeing, printing, and embroidery unit three, this is the syllabus for garment finishes classification. For so, we have thoroughly uh, discussed about the classification of various types of. Fabric and garment finishes in the earlier class. So in today's class, we are going to discuss some of the finishes, specifically the fragrance finish, UV protection finish, cool finishes, thermal finishes, and water-resistant breathable finishes in this video. Okay. So this video consists of fragrance finish, UV protection finishes, cool and thermal finishes, then water-resistant breathable finishes. Okay. You see, fragrance finish is Based upon the smell, okay, smell. So basically, the basic concept is like the garments are finished with a specific smell. So whatever the uh, like maybe rose, lemon, or uh, maybe jasmine, or any of the chocolate, any of the scent can be captured with a micro encapsulation technique, and these capsules will be attached to the fabric or garment surface. So, whenever the general wear and tear will be there, so this capsule will burst and then it will release the scent. Is it? So, this is the basic thing. So, in UV protection, UV is the, nothing but uh, it's a specific uh, segment of the uh, rays, okay, ultraviolet rays. So, it will cause too many problems, like uh, maybe it will also cause the cancer, DNA generation problems, and so many problems are there. Generally, in uh, Earth, what happens? This ozone layer will be there. Ozone is the one which will stop the UV radiation from uh, entering into the atmosphere. But uh, due to depletion of ozone layers and various other things, uh, what happens? Is these UV rays are also being uh, part of uh, the sunlight, and uh, these are not good, especially for uh, eyes, skin, and various other things. We'll discuss in detail about this. So. How the fabrics you are having is specific to UV finish, how these are going to function and all that also we are going to discuss. Apart from this very interesting and fascinating cool and thermal finishes, okay. So how it will uh, reduce the body temperature, okay, either by uh, means uh, sometimes insulation, means the thermal finishes and sometimes with the insulation, some of the chemical finishes are there. Some will be there which are very good in uh, transporting the natural uh, sweat, okay. And uh, some components uh, which uh, when these are react with the water, it will uh, create the, uh, the feel or the sense of cooling, okay. As like even some of the powders are also there, right. Or skin powders, Navaratna cool dark, okay. Whenever the sweat happens, similarly the same also being applied to the fabrics also. Similarly, there are various kinds of finishes which will provide the cool finishes, and the thermal finishes. Thermal finishes means basically insulation. And apart from this, uh, we are also going to discuss the water resistant breathable finishes. Water resistant breathable finishes. Okay, means it will not allow the water to go inside, but uh, vapor will be permeable. So that uh, breathable is, breathing is done. Okay, generally if you make it waterproof means a coating will be applied so that nothing will be passed under this, isn't it? So it is like that. But uh, there are a special type of finishes. Okay, we are going to discuss in detail about these finishes in this video. Okay, fragrance finishes, UV protection finishes, and thermal finishes, water resistant breathable finishes. Okay, this is the very important uh, topic uh, of this entire subject uh, or this unit we will consider. Um, many of you already might be knowing, but still we will review. Okay, so yeah, we will start with uh, so basically 
all these finishes basically value addition value addition means the perceived value of the product will be increased unless any product is characterized by value addition it is impossible to survive in today's market okay so the consumer also is having so much of knowledge even maybe you are textile graduates other people are also there they also know earlier they don't know what is what and all okay silk polyester with these maybe common things but uh, now the customers are also very much uh, what you call familiar eh? and uh, they want uh, the better technology which is available today okay so that's why if you are not innovative and if you are not adding the value to the products you cannot survive in the market okay that maybe means you means as a brand or uh, as a manufacturing company as a supplying house or uh, any other thing when you are involved in the textile supply chain you should be I have uh, having a very thorough knowledge in terms of the latest technologies and trends which are happening. Okay, so that is the very prime and important thing. Now, if you see many of the garment finishes, apart from this, all the garment finishes, garment finishes. In the earlier video, we discussed specifically about the fabric finishes. The garment finishes when it comes, okay, how it will be applied. The method of application is basically. Two types. Okay, one is dip process, another one is tumbling process. Dip, tumbling. Okay, so these are the two methods. So what are the chemical is there? It will be the garments will be dipped and then the moisture will be evaporated and uh, then it will be cured. That is one method. Another one is tumbling means along with the water itself, along with the liquor, it will be keep on circulating. Okay, let us see in brief what is that. So dipping the garments inside. The finishing chemical keeping a MLRI of one is to five. Okay, so that what will happen? It will absorb some of the chemical, and then uh, uh, in the dip process, the washing machine also may be used. Okay, so rotate the garment by twenty minutes by keeping MLR is to one is to five or something like that. Then after this twenty minutes of process, the garment will be. Hydro extracted. Where earlier in GDP also uh, in the first year it also we discussed the hydro extract, which will keep on rotating. Where the moisture will be gone. So the hydro extract can be done until uh, only seventy to eighty percent of pickup will be there. Then uh, that our tumble drying of these garments at seventy degrees centigrade, uh, such that the moisture content will be ten to twelve percent. Then turn the garments uh, right side out. Means uh, it will be impressed with uh, inside out. So, so the reversal process. Then ironing, steaming, and uh, wherever the uh, creases are required at the desired places. And then the curing at 150 to 160 degrees centigrade, depending upon the what kind of finish or what kind of chemical we are doing. Okay. So this is common. Either if we are uh, implanting uh, durable press finish, ETI finish, or Uh, waterproof finish or flame proof finish any of the chemical how you can uh, in case if the chemical is uh, water soluble then these are the two methods one is the dip method and another one is the tumbler method dip method what happens it can be loaded into a washer washing machine along with the liquor with the 1 is to 5 and all so it can be rotated for uh, 20 minutes generally then these will be removed and hydro extracted Until uh, the moisture uh, content, which can be there around seventy to eighty percent, is only then these will be transferred to the tumble dryer, uh, where uh, at the temperature uh, around seventy and all, it can be run for twenty minutes or fifteen minutes, so that the moisture content remain will be only ten to twelve percent. Is then it can be made into the as per the normal form and even ironing, pressing, wherever the creases are required, those things also. Then it will be heat set for one fifty to one sixty degrees. This is the one method which is commonly used method, the dipping process. Another one is a tumble method. In this process, the garments are placed inside out. Obviously, we will not put the face or the bright, or the usable side onto the one, so which will be reversed. And uh, into a machine with a seal means non-perforated cylinder, non-perforated cylinder. And application of recipe either by pumping or spraying. Either water will be kept, or at the top the spray will be there, and the spray will be keep on going, and the tumbling will be keep on happening. 
Okay, the drum is rotated for 20 minutes. And there should not be any excessive dripping. Means whatever is done. In basically hot air also will be done. So what happens is once uh, the chemical which is applied onto the surface of the fabric, it will immediately it will fix. Okay. So depending upon the kind of finish and all, uh, the tumbling time is also allowed. Okay. So but one of the problem is that the, there may be patches are in some of the applications, some of the areas it may not be done. Okay. So wherever it is, it should be through spraying only it can be done and then the tumble method is the best one. Otherwise, the normal recommended method is the dip method. Okay. And in this sample method, uh, which is uh, more and more the fact that there is no vestige of chemicals. Okay. There is no vestige of chemicals. Through the spraying only it will be done. And after saturation, the garments are hydro extracted, tumble dry at a when Here, the tumble drying can be done at 70 degrees centigrade only. Until the 10 to 20 percent pickup will be remain. Then again, ironing, steam press uh, can be done and uh, curing at 150 to 160 degrees centigrade for 8 to 10 minutes. Understood? So, these are the two methods of application of garment finishes. Okay. One is what? The dip method. Another one is tumble method. In dip method, MLR is more. In tumble method, it is very less and only spraying will be done. Okay. So, there will not be any excessive uh, liquid or moisture and all which is available. So, that is the advantage of uh, double method. So, any of this can be generally used. Okay. So, if you consider the tumble method, the MLRs will be generally 1 is to 0.85. Okay. Minimum. And it should not be uh, lesser than this 0.85. Okay. It can be a little higher also. In case of garments which are weighing less than uh, 600 grams, okay, if the garments are weighing more than 600 grams, then MLR will be 1 is to 1. And the minimum time of tumbling will be 20 minutes. You can see the tumble machine and all how it will be there, where <laughs> it can be loaded into the garments and the finish or the chemical which is required to be applied, which will be having spraying or uh, sometimes sprinkling effect. Okay. Yeah, understood. I hope you, you understood. So, any of the garment finishes, earlier we discussed about the fabric finish and all, it may be in a continuous or jigger or any of these things, it will be happened. But in case of garment finishes, so either it may be a dip method or a tumbler method. Okay, dip method or tumble method. Okay, so in case of tumble method, we need to see that 20 to 30 RPM only it should be there. It should not be too high also. So, nippiness or uh, other problems it should not be there. And uh, during the tumble drying also, the temperature should not be more than 70 degrees centigrade. Okay, sometimes a light color sundal may become you know, well, light, I mean, the whitest color may become yellowish or sometimes there may be a slight uh, change in terms of the shade. Okay, so that's why it should be avoided. And the moisture retention after drying should be around 10 to 12 percent. Okay. So that is about the application of finishes, either dip method or uh, what do you call uh, the tumbler method. So today's topic where we will I means uh, the specific finishes we will be discussing. Okay, we will be discussing about uh, various finishes. The first one is like uh, the fragrance finishes. Okay. So what happens? The smell will be applied to the fabric. Okay, the scent is applied to the fabric. So, these are basically the micro encapsulated formulations of various fragrances like musk, pineapple, rose, lavender, jasmine, lemon, peppermint, chocolate, any of the flavor you want. Okay, it can be made into a scent form, right? So, these scent are saved into a micro encapsulated formulation and these are applied to the fabric through pad dry cube. Okay, pad, dry, cure. Okay, so these are applied under the fabric generally with the help of a binder. Okay, or uh, in case of garment also, it can be applied as like what we have discussed. So they impart the fragrance when applied. Much of the work is concerned with the micro encapsulation of fragrance oils like perfumes and aromatics, and uh, maybe citrus, rose, lily, jasmine. Any of the cinnamon flavor also can be applied. Okay. So, the fragrance with uh, beta cyclodextrin, 
all that may be like it's a citrus flavor, beta cyclodextrin. Inclusions were uh, formed with a mixture of uh, a, an alcohol. Okay, basically it will evaporate as like a solvent and distilled water with a ratio of 1 is to 3. So, scent, alcohol and water. So this solution is emulsified with a high speed distiller or mixer. Okay, for 10,000 RPM for 5 minutes and then so what, what happens? This emulsion will be very uh, proper. Means the scent is properly diluted with the help of uh, the solvent. Okay, that is the alcohol. Okay. So nowadays you also might be appearing means this hand sanitizer and all right. Similarly, any kind of uh, alcohol can be used. Generally, hand sanitizer consists of 70 percent of So similarly, while applying to this one also, the emulsified system of this uh, scent, alcohol, and distilled water. So this will be transferred into a flask. This fragrance alcohol solution was added into a emulsified solution for. Uh, 30 minutes and stir it at a temperature of 40 degrees centigrade for 2 hours in exhaust method. So, what about this beta cyclic extreme, which is using this hydrolic acid and sodium hypophosphate uh, and potassium pyrosulfate was applied to as an exhausting agent and the fragrance was sprayed by means of the spraying gun. Okay, or in terms of the tumbling. Okay, so once it is done, okay. So, it can be passed through either uh, padding method and then uh, the fabric is padded with the recipe. Fragrance 10% of weight of the fabric should be there. Then the padding pressure is somewhere around means this is for example, okay, 2 kg and dry and cure at uh, 70 to 120 degrees centigrade 1 to 5 minutes. And this is a good padding. Similarly, exhaustion also prepare the recipe with water for uh, uh, desired concentration and exhaust it. 40 degrees centigrade for 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. And then hydro extract the water and use the fragrance of 5 to 10 percent of weight of the fabric. Okay. So many of the fragrances are readily available to use. Readily available to use. And many of them are uh, having a special value addition like uh, made from uh, aloe vera, jasmine, green apple. Okay. So, various things are also having additional properties like antimicrobial and all other properties also. But here, the primary thing is that uh, scent or aromatic. Okay. Okay. So, there are many chemical suppliers which are commercially available for applying uh, this finish to the fabric and garments. Okay. It's not new. It is being used for so many decades and uh, uh, which is... Uh, Popular, but uh, only thing is that the kind of fixing agent and all may be little less, that's why it is not so durable. Okay. So, this is about uh, the first uh, fragrance finish. The second finish is like uh, the ultraviolet protection finish, UV protection finish. Okay. So, there are various kinds of segments like in this one, the knitted one, woven one, non woven one. Okay. So, the UV protection finish. Okay. So, in this one, it will be having 10x, 40x, 80x, 100x like that. That means, whatever the effect which the skin is going to get in one hour, okay, by applying this one, okay, it can be, the same effect will be achieved only at 80 hours. Okay, that means, the aging or what you call, uh, the effect of radiation will be reduced by that many times. That is also referred as a UPF. Okay, ultraviolet protection. So basically, what is this ultraviolet? Ultraviolet is a spectrum. Okay. So if you see what happens in the extreme, the radio waves, then micro waves. Okay. Then uh, infrared, then visible spectrum, then UV spectrum, then X-ray spectrum, and gamma spectrum. Okay. So if you see the wavelength and all. Okay. So the radio waves means as like the building waves. Okay. No problem. Okay, and if you see the last one here also, the energy, the energy which is being given. The energy means how much energy is having this radiation. So, as this carry further, so what happens, the energy is also more. So, when they take x-ray and all also, we will take a half an hour or, or one hour exposure of x-ray, no, it will damage it. Okay, and also if they tell, what you call that. In case of pregnant women, you do are not allowed for X-ray work. Understood? So why? Because these are very sensitive and it will damage 
the basic uh, genetic DNA and other things also. So, see, the radio waves are null as like the human is the same. Microwave means the wavelength is like an insect. Okay. Similarly, infrared means which is similar to a, a human cells. Visible spectrum is like very small one. And UV is like molecular weight. Okay. That is the spectrum. So, what happens if you penetrate into the anywhere very easily? The UV. The UV. Right. So, what happens? So, the visible spectrum is basically between 400 to 700. Okay. Uh, so, this side. Uh, like uh, uh, the violet, afterwards ultraviolet. You know the visible spectrum, right? With the uh, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Okay. After red, it is infrared. Okay. After uh, violet, it is ultraviolet. Okay. So that's the name. The UV came into the picture. Okay. If you see the electromagnetic spectrum, okay, visible light, then the UV. In that also. Generally, the spectrum of 100 to 400 is considered as a UV spectrum. 400 to 700 is normally as a uh, visible spectrum, 780 and all. More than 780 and all is not possible. Generally, in most of the cases, 700 itself is the max. Okay. So, out of this 400 to 100, if you further classify also, the UV spectrum can be further dissected into UVA, UVB and UVC. Okay. UVC is very very dangerous for us, okay, which will not be generally found in normal uh, health, okay, why because most of this is there in the outside the planet itself, outside the planet itself, but in most of the UV, A, B and C, all these spectrums are also filtered through the ozone layer which is naturally available on the uh, surface of the planet, isn't it? So, the ozone layer, basically what it will do, it will filter out this UV radiation, okay, 100 to 400. So, vacuum UV 100 to 200 and vacuum uh, or UVC 200 to 280, okay, generally not found. The problem with UV B and C is there, okay. So, UV A and B are generally dealt with the uh, items which are used on the surface, only uh, like rockets or any of the things which are sent outer to, to outer space, they need to be tested with UVC and other things. Okay, so due to dark birds today or something, this UV spectrum is not generally comes along with the, the sun rays. Okay, why? Because it will be blocked or filtered with the ozone layer. Okay, so otherwise, what will happen? We cannot sustain this. Is it? So. The UV rays, okay. So, what happens, what happens to this UV rays? What happens? So, this long term exposure to UV light can result in acceleration of skin aging, okay. Acceleration of skin aging. Skin, this age will become into more like as like uh, very older people and uh, even at the age ages, okay. Then, uh, photodermatosis like infants or uh, what you call uh, rashes will be there on the skins. Then uh, phototoxic reactions to drugs, okay. When uh, some drugs and all is being made, some medicines and all being used, so it will uh, create into a phototoxin. Then uh, skin reddening, skin irritation, then sunburn, okay. Sunburn also means the skin will get damaged and increases risk of uh, melanoma. This is a skin cancer. Skin cancer can be caused. And eye damage, okay. The retinal damage also may happen with UV light. Then DNA damage also will happen, okay. So, that is the reason uh, generally these radiations are not uh, specified. Even uh, when this Grahana Mandala also will come, uh, generally people will uh, tell that, okay. So, due to this incidence of light, sometimes this radiation may come. Okay, so that is the reason they ask us to stay indoors and all during the animal. Okay, any of some people, it is not scientifically proven at all, but basically what happens is the exposure of UV rays does not bring any good. Okay, so where, where is this UV rays? Obviously, it is there coming along with the sunlight. Okay, so there are few factors like UPF, ultraviolet rays protection factor, similarly SPF. Sun protection factor. I mean, basically, to go to this uh, sun rays, also the sunburns and other things will come, right? 
So, UPF10 or SPF10, you can find in the some of the skin creams also. Okay, SPF10 means, that means it will filter out uh, uh, one tenth. Okay, it will allow only one tenth of it. Okay, SPF90 means it will allow only one by 90 of it. Understand whatever it is there. So, obviously what happens if you, whatever the effect you are going to get by standing in under the sun for one hour, if you apply for uh, this SPF 10 and then if you stand for 10 hours, the same effect is supposed to come. That is nothing but SPF 10 or UPF 10. Okay. Yeah. Thus, UV protection finish. The protection is offered by the UV cutting fabrics. It is expressed in terms of UV protection factor, UPF or sun protection factor, SPF, which are equivalent to the users means when you are using. So, UPF 40 of the garment means the wearer can stay 40 times longer in the sun before skin reddening sets up. Okay. UPF 40 means 40 times longer. Means generally the person without wearing anything, if he is standing for one hour, if he is having getting the problem, then by wearing it 40 times. Okay. So UPF is the ratio. Okay. UPF is the ratio. UPF is the ratio. So normally if he gets burned in 15 minutes by means of wearing this cream or uh, garment or something, he can stay for 10 hours. That is nothing but 15 minutes to 10 hours. That is the ratio of 41 is to 40. Okay, the same thing UP of 40 which indicates that. Yeah. So basically there are two elements for the comprehensive product. One is referred as UV absorbers. One is UV absorbers like uh, benzotriazole and phenyl benzotriazole. These are the molecules able to absorb the damaging UV rays of the sunlight. Okay, so we use these chemicals on top of the chem, what you call uh, the garments or spectacles or uh, the sunscreens also sometimes. Okay, so UV absorbents convert the UV energy into harmless heat energy, means it produces heat by absorbing this. And this transformation is reasonable, means it can be used again and again also repeatedly. Okay, at the same time UV absorbers can cause discoloration if used in a higher concentration. So whatever the good feel of the fabrics under is one of the biggest problems and it should be basically taken into care. That is one of the biggest problems with respect to the UV Observers. Okay. You see in this one, basically what happens if this is the fabric of the garment. So when the UV light comes up, okay. So some will be observed, some will be scattered, some will be reflected, some will be reflected, some will be scattered, and some will be observed. And through transmission, some will be gone into. So what happens? The absorption is okay, can be done which, uh, with the chemical matter. But also the construction of these fabrics means either woven, knitted, what kind of fiber it is, and uh, all these things will have a greater influence in terms of the UV transmitters. UV transmitters. Okay. So the UPF, the ultraviolet protection factor, extends depending upon the construction of the fabrics and garments. Spacing between the yarns, how open or how close it is. What are the fiber types? Okay, what is the color which is there? And how much textile is being impregnated with the chemicals? And the presence of optical brightness and UV absorbers. Okay, this will affect the entire UPF value. Okay, so out of this one we can control is nothing but the presence of optical violet absorbers and the optical brightness. Understood? Yeah. So, the UPF is also dependent upon the swelling capacity of the fibers. The UV blocking capacity of the fiber can be improved by incorporating the titanium dioxide, TiO2, into its structure. Okay, so what happens, which is basically used as a delustering agent, also it will scatter. Okay, so through the swelling or this absorption and TiO2 also can be used. So this is the chemical structure of uh, the ha hydroxyphenyl structure where it will absorb the UV and release it and similarly it will keep on changing the structure. Okay, so basically what it will do, it will absorb the UV light spectrum and releases the heat. 
so temporarily it is changing the structure. Similarly, it will be made into a circuit. Understood? Okay. So similarly, specific chemicals which are available, which will observe the UV. So UV observers is one of the criteria. Apart from this, the kind of view, which color it is, and the optical brightening agents also will affect the UV protection. So basically, these are required for both the outdoor applications and also the sunny areas wherever these are very much required generally. Okay. So I hope you understood what is UV protection finish. UV protection finish is nothing but a finish which can be applied to fabric or garments, not only apparels, even the spectacles, whatever we wear uh, under the skin, means even including the skin creams and all. So for these and all, the UV protection finishes are required. Okay. Yeah. So it will uh, basically reduce the penetration of UV under the skin or uh, through retina, all these things. So this is one of the very important finish. The next one is the cool finish. So cool finishes are various new concepts are there. These are basically focusing the body cool, okay, which has recently been introduced. The cool touch materials are the products that optimizes the basically the moisture evaporation. Basically, plays with the moisture evaporation. Okay. Yeah. So one of this is like cool jade finish, luxy cool finish, then adaptive high Q finish, outlast which is from the thermocool. So, so, so out of this, high Q is one of the things, even in our India also, their uh, masks are being produced, you know, high Q antiviral masks. Okay, they are uh, confident and proven that whatever the finishes which are applied to the masks, basically, will not propagate the growth of the virus and it will kill the virus, including the COVID-19. So basically, it's a Swiss chemical company, IQ. The concept is based on the hydrofunctional polymer that captures and distributes the moisture in a film surrounding each fiber. It means what happens? It will absorb the moisture and it will transfer the moisture into a very thin film. It will not go inside. Okay, but on the surface of the fibers itself, it will be transferred. So what happens when the surface area? which occupied is more, obviously the drying time is very, very quick. So, drying time is very, very quick. The speed, the drying speed is abnormally high. Okay. So, this resultant into the material with three modular functions. Okay. The one is the dynamic evaporation. Okay. To increase the evaporation, obviously what will happen? It will produce the cooling effect in warm condition. And decrease the moderated evaporation in terms of the cool conditions. Okay, the dynamic evaporation it can be modified also. Okay, in case of warm condition, what will happen? The moisture will be transferred very easily. Okay, and in case of uh, decreased or moderate evaporation in cool conditions, what will happen? The evaporation will be reduced. You see the the. Uh, what you call uh, the fibers which are there, so heat energy from the skin, so the spreading of water will be taken toward the fibers and then it will be passed down. So this activated cooling through the dynamic evaporation will take place, okay. So we will also see a video in this one, okay. So basically the second one, one is the evaporation, another one is the dynamic fabric wetting. So increased wetting and spreading in warm conditions and moderate wetting in cool conditions. Okay. The wetting will be dynamic. Okay. It will be increased in case of warm conditions and decreased in case of cold conditions. Okay. Similarly, the dynamic wicking. Okay. Wicking is the property that transfers the moisture even in the upward against gravity also. High Q, this basically which is depending upon the temperature and moisture conditions on the skin surface. The moisture transport properties adapt to the temperature conditions. Means the wicking and null is not 
quite simple. Okay, it will be the wicking or the transfer ratio, the moisture or movement will be higher in case of warm conditions, lower in case of uh, colder conditions. Okay, again it is a patented technology, all the specifics will not be done. So more moisture transport at higher temperatures are needed and uh, least at the cooling. Understood? So if you see, one of the, uh, what do you call a treated fabric and untreated fabric, okay. Uh, when it is kept on a similar uh, heat source on the body. So one is showing 35 degrees centigrade, another one is showing 20 degrees centigrade. So this is a untreated fabric and treated fabric at 20 and 35 degrees. Okay, how it is the heat spectrum, I hope you can understand at 35, whatever this cold one is there, that is the one which is treated. So where what happens? The temperature is still cooling. Okay. I hope you through this video you will better understand. Can a man outrun a horse? Impossible, you think. But the truth is, he can. And even more surprisingly, over an unlimited distance, humans can outrun any animal, even a cheetah. We're the best endurance runners in the animal kingdom, thanks to our unique ability to regulate our body temperature by sweating through our skin. But this natural cooling and evaporation process is blocked by our clothes, compromising our ability to regulate our body temperature and affecting our physical performance. So we developed HiQ Smart Temp, the world's first dynamic cooling treatment for clothes. HiQ Smart Temp senses any increase in body temperature and perspiration and makes your clothes evaporate moisture faster when you're hot and slower when you're cool, mimicking your skin's ability to sweat, keeping you cool, dry, and comfortable. Whether you're trying to outrun a cheetah or just going for a jog, HiQ Smart Temp by HiQ. Get your evolutionary edge back. HiQ Smart Temp the world's first dynamic cooling treatment for clothes. Yes. So, you understood the high Q technique, right? The next one is Advanza is a company. It's a European fiber producer, Advanza. So, this thermocool finish is there. So, cool, European fiber, manufacturer, more emphasis on thermocools, dual properties with dual regulation. The fabric concept optimizes the body natural thermal capabilities by combining two types of fibers. By combining two types of fibers, the cross section is different. So when the body perspiration is takes place, so what happens, this modified cross section polyester which speeds up the moisture evaporation, the evaporation will be so fast. In cool condition, halocore polyester. So two types of cross sections will be there. One is as like the zigzag one, another one is a circle one. Okay. So in cool condition, this halocore of polyester filaments kicks in to provide a thermal buffering. Okay, means whatever the heat which is stored on the cross section, so which will be released basically, which also helps to prevent the post exercise chills. And after doing the exercise and all it is okay, once it is done and all what happens is suddenly chillness will be there. Okay, due to this more uh, uh, sweating which will be there and after uh, evaporating it gives the cool effect. Okay, so this circular cross section will help in this buffering. Okay. So the two combined, okay one is the modified cross section and another one is the circular cross section. So which will reduce the temperature variations and it will keep the body in an ideal comfort. Okay. Similarly, earlier and now the face changing materials were used basically. Okay. So that is also one of the techniques. Okay. So we will see the technology in uh, advanced thermocool video.
आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ दिस एडवांस दर्मोकुल नेक्स्ट वन इज लक्सी कुल सो द लक्सी कुल इज ए कंपनी विच इज फ्रॉम द बेल्जियम कंपनी so all these are copyrighted and you cannot uh, reproduce the same thing okay we need to take the same technology and use it the luxy pool is a uh, belgian company and uh, which is also patented so it's basically have a polymer which combines the hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules that break water molecule apart to speed up the evaporation and cool the body the fiber is also is said to be a conductor so it also it uses a specific uh, hybrid polymer which combines hydrophobic molecules and hydrophilic molecules so that what will happen the evaporation is so huge means the speed is higher that it will happen so that is one technology belgian technology then another one is low outlast basically this is proven which is being used from uh, this is the first in the class okay face changing materials so uh, outlast is the company or the trade name for uh, these pcms so uh, these are cool at the first touch and they do not wick away means they will not uh, take away that the moisture it will absorb what you call the coolness store it and again it will repeat okay <laughs> so basically due to this what happens ki it will reduce the perspiration due to this temperature variations will be very less okay so what are the skin and on top of this this outlast material so what it will do the temperature it will store whenever it requires it will release okay so excess heat is absorbed that is one and second one is heat is stored and stored heat is released so that so basically while taking under cooling effect will be there okay but uh, it is having its own limitation that after continuous exposure of heat and love it cannot get Outlast technology utilizes phase change materials that proactively regulate temperature to adjust to the body's microclimate to provide optimum comfort. When it's too warm, the Outlast material absorbs and stores the excess heat. The Outlast material then adapts to your skin's microclimate so overheating and sweating are reduced. As the skin cools, the absorbed heat is released back to the body to maintain a balanced temperature. the cycle works continuously compared to other performance materials that manage moisture by reactively pulling sweat away from the skin by wicking outlast technology proactively manages heat while controlling the production of moisture before it begins the result outlast creates an optimum comfort zone next to your body okay so that's it so this is one novel technique zintal zintal micro encapsulated the same is also used in terms of uh, this uh, similar is used uh, in terms of navratna cool dal or any of the powders which will be there so this zintal changes the state in the presence of moisture producing a cool sensation this type of material based on a hydric phase change substance and li- very limited durability It means uh, it cannot be a, a reversible process okay so as like powder and all it is okay but uh, it is also tried with micro encapsulation technology for the fabrics also so whenever the wear and tear and the perspiration will be there as like uh, this cool towel powder and all similarly whenever it comes with the moisture and all it will gives the chillness effect okay but later on what happens once these capsules and all are done it can and be gives the same thing okay so columbia sports wear okay used uh, similar material in terms of this uh, cool effect fabric called omni freeze ice omni freeze ice with a flat filament here in the flat filament and all this micro encapsulation will be done with xylitol xylitol is a chemical so this flat filament creates a greater surface of contact with the skin and a higher degree of heat convection so this is one thing the other one is next one is a cool gel or cold stone fibers so jade is a type of uh, plant from there it is uh, extracted some of the elements jade micro or nano particles which are incorporated into a polyester fiber and which are given with an x shape cross section so this 
cool effect fabrics generally said to be that whatever the temperature is there the temperature will be four to up to two to four degrees centigrade lesser and it is natural so that's why it is even costly also we'll see and the presence of these jet particles the x type of jet particles produces a endothermic reaction that absorbs energy generating a feeling of freshness okay so feeling of freshness when it is absorbed this energy and all obviously what will happen the heat which is removed will create a cool sensation these jet fiber fabrics feel cool to the hand at first touch after which the fabric stabilizes at ambient temperatures okay so the same technology is also used for some of the undergarments you can see the price of this one which is for the sale how much yes you have said is correct 1 lakh 18500 rupees for one undergarment for one underwear 1 lakh 18000 so expensive since you have a specific finishes and the then there is a specific customer segment also they will be able to spend even 1 lakh for an undergarment so yeah so we'll see this video how it will functions they are manufactured through a multi-layer knitting process and during this process we infuse natural jade minerals into our microfiber technology the process transforms fibers finer than a human hair into very long filaments with distinctive performance capabilities to wick away your sweat. As the heat leaves your body through perspiration, the jade minerals harness the coolness effect that is produced and optimizes comfort and performance by lowering your skin's temperature up to 10 degrees. Another benefit is the sun's rays reflect off the infused jade to help in the cooling process as well as offering you up to a 35 plus SPF protection factor. The breathability of the toad skin's fabric is increased by your active body motion. which actually accelerates the evaporation of your body sweat. Additionally, our proprietary antimicrobial nanotechnology that ensures superior antifiber degradation and odor resistance that controls 99.9% of the bacteria even after 50 washes. Everyone's body is different, so your results may vary. But either way, the end result will be better than the rest. Next one is the cool finish at the snow cool the snow cool finish is used for moisture management good it will enhance the natural phenomena of sweat evaporation the evaporation whatever is there it will increase the sweat evaporation so this about this finish absorbs and dissipates sweat evenly throughout so basically if you observe many of the finishes what we have discussed so far are basically it will increase the evaporation rate by spreading the surface area okay by spreading the surface area okay so this cool finish if you see what happens this fabric which is kept here so this moisture particles will be separated okay which is spread and then lot of evaporation will take place and the garments which are finished with this snow cool this is a finish uh produced with a cool effect and it have two fold effect it reflects the light a special polymer so that what will happen the absorption will be less okay so the heat transfer will be less and also the transfer of soft moisture is faster so that the evaporation will be faster so that's why this is referred as snow cool which is cool as like a snow again that is a trend similarly a thermocat finish so here also finishing agent for producing heat retaining effect this type of finishing when applied to the fabric keeps it warm thermocat finish so produces heat retaining effect due to infrared radiation owing to its porosity okay porous structure and all will be okay you can see this pore center so these are especially suitable for 100% cellulose and its blends okay basically the warmthness will be very very less in case of uh, the cellulose fibers so especially these kind of things and that what happens in these are much more is it so far we have seen so many types of finishes is it okay jade finish thermocool finish yeah xylene finish all these finishes now the last finish for this video is 
water resistant breathable finishes water resistant breathable finish water resistance or water permeability permeability resistance so if you can see this for fabric photo in here so what happens it will not allow the moisture to get inside but it will allow the vapor to go out understood so wind and rain are block the fabric surface shields the moisture and breathing will happen the body moisture vapor will go out how it is possible sir is it possible these are like one way fabric okay so from here not possible from here possible yes yes this technology is being used and which is very very popular in terms of uh, the sports wear in terms of the sports wear so this waterproof textile which is called as intelligent waterproofing fabrics intelligent waterproofing fabrics. so which is permeable to water vapor that is perspiration at a rate of 2 to 4 liter per meter square per day for light applications and 4 to 5 liters per meter square per day for heavy applications okay so there are several methods which can be used to obtain this kind of things generally these are grouped into three categories one is densely woven fabrics and the fabric is very densely woven in such a way that the warp yarns and weft yarns are interlaced in such a way that very small gaps are there where water cannot penetrate but the vapor can come out why because the vapor stage is smaller water particle stage is weaker and second one is using of a membrane technique. And the third one is using a coating technology. We will see in example. So these densely woven fabrics are also known as ventile fabrics. These are primarily manufactured in 1940s and 50s. Ventile fabrics. Vent means air. The fabric was needed that would allow the personnel to be comfortable while carrying out normal flying duties and prevent penetration of water if they were immersed into the sea. Okay, so for that purpose, these are basically made ventile fabrics. So the pore sizes are in between three to ten micrometer. The pore sizes for these densely woven fabrics will be consisting three to ten micrometer. These ventile fabrics are carefully engineered to make it effective, and these are made from finest types of longest staple cottons like Sea Island cottons and all can be used. and with low twist mercerized yarns woven into a oxford weave oxford weave means two of means a box weave oxford weave is a box weave two way box two way to mat weave okay. and uh, <coughs> two threads acting together in the warp okay that is the oxford so this new generation high density fabrics made from the microfilaments of usually the polyethylene terephthalate that is polyester polyamide of 0.05 to 1 decitex 0.05 to 1 decitex having up to 7000 filaments per centimeter 7000 filaments per centimeter shows better water repellency than the cotton ventile fabrics so the multi filaments not cut and twisted the multi filament fabrics basically shows better water prevention repellency so the water resistance property is improved by application of water repellent finishes on type of this multi filaments like silicon finish or fluorochemicals tetrafluorochemicals like teflon teflon or silicon finishes will be applied onto this multi filament uh, fabrics such that what will happen these can be properly used this can be properly used as a water repellent but vapor permeable fabrics water repellent but vapor permeable fabrics either silicon or teflon coating on top of the multi filament fabrics is the quite common and normal this is the second technique to obtain this waterproofing breathable fabrics are membranes so membranes are the extremely thin films 
from uh, made from various types of uh, polymers and engineered in such a way that these are hydrophobic to water such that the liquid water penetration will not be allowed but water vapor passage will be allowed because of these thin films okay the films which are coated on top of the yarn also okay so a typical membrane is about 10 micrometer thickness and therefore is laminated to a conventional textile fabric to provide the necessary mechanicals okay so textile fabric will be there on top of this this thin film coating will be carried out okay this can be either microporous and also hydrophilic okay microporous so that vapor will be permeable and hydrophilic such that water will not be make proper reaction and it will not enter into it so if you see this fabric here what will happen the membrane is in between so rain and bond what it will happen it will come back but the perspiration vapor will go inside perspiration vapor will go inside similarly in the other fabric also you can see what happens the vapor will come out but rain will not enter into it through use of membrane technology on top of the fabrics the third one is very commercially normally used are the coatings it consists of a layer of polymer applied on the surface of the fabric in such a way that it will form a layer so the water will not be permeable the coatings okay so one is highly densely woven fabrics second one is membranes third one is the coatings coatings are the one which is commonly used but what happens the breathability will be problematic with improvement in thermic technologies and materials like uh, polyurethane pu is used as a coating material as like a sponge very small sponge layer okay so what will happen like membranes the coatings are of two types microporous and hydrophilic so these coatings are much thicker than the membranes membranes are only 10 micrometers but these coatings will make a solid layer on top of the fabrics such that it will produce water proofing or water resistance breathable fabrics these are the three methods these are the three methods okay so how we can do for the garments generally through spraying technique generally through the spraying technique you can see in this figure also what happens the vapor will is coming out okay from inside the body but the outside whatever is the sometimes even what happens it will be made into a composite structure also the inner will be a oh, what you call a uh, cotton such that it will absorb the moisture and uh, it will give a smooth uh, finish to the skin outer will be a polyester or nylon which is uh, not attracted to the water and it will come out and so, so such sort of things are also so in this video what we understood we discussed about fragrance finishes through micro encapsulation techniques pack dry cure method uv protection similarly either uh, dip method or uh, membrane uh, spraying method or pack dry cure method can be used for uv protection finishes similarly various types of cool finishes and thermal finishes and also we discussed about the water resistant breathable finishes okay so these i hope you have learned uh, very new things today and uh, I hope you enjoyed the class. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you. We reached the end of unit three video two.